Welcome to the DIY Writer Show with the mild-mannered, slightly heroic host, Jeff Bacon. This is Jeff Bacon with the DIY Writer Podcast, and today I've got James Reed. James, how are you doing? Oh, I am doing great. Uh, yeah? It is a day. I started a new novel today. So. You did? Yep, I got the first chapter and into chapter two done. So that's always, uh, that's the, the scariest part for me is starting the novel. Once I get into the groove, it usually goes well, but you know, it's always that first uh, opening lines. And, <laughs> and it's the second book, which I always find is even harder than the first. <laughs> so uh, how long does it take you to put out a novel? Um, I can write a 90,000 word novel in, it takes me about 36 hours. What? I'm sorry. Do you say it's about like a 90,000 word? It takes me about 36 hours. That's spread over yeah. like, three weeks, right? I don't, it's not one sitting, but like that's like no, two I, hours a day. Like I tried to do two hours a day on it. Yeah. And so it's like 18 days or so. Huh. And I got a 90,000 word novel. Um, well, that's not too shabby. Like, yeah. So. That's not too shabby at all. So you've got, you, you've got a good amount of books out. And you also have a box that you want to talk about a little bit, which is is from your first series, um, um, above. And it's above the storm. That's the first book. The series is called Storm Below. Storm Below. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah it's fine. Above the storm. Yeah, it's just what I was looking at. Now, I, I, uh, it's one of those things where I look at the cover. I'm like, oh, that is so cool. I just, I, I, I kind of dig the. Uh, the uniforms and then all the chaos in the back and everything else. So tell us a little bit about it. So uh, the storm below, it's a five book uh, epic and military fantasy series. Um, mm -hmm. My first uh, actual first novel I fully wrote about the storm. So I'm rather proud of it. And uh, so it is set in a world of floating islands uh, above an ever turning storm. So they're, they hover in the sky and there's this storm and it covers the ground and whatever is beneath that is, Myth to the people, you know, and um, so the problem is that the storm has uh, these entities called the storm riders, and they don't like the people who live above the storm, and so they send uh, cyclones, huge, massive storms, and they ride in them and attack, you know, their islands. So this requires countries in the skies to spend a great deal of military investment in protecting all their little skylands, you know, because they're small. Most of them are only uh the size of like rhode island so maybe the size of like uh connecticut i mean there's some big ones but most of them are really small and um but you got to protect them all because you know when uh when the storm riders win like you know stuff falls out of the sky and there's a lot of people die and stuff so yeah so we have ari and shailene they are our two main characters and they grow up on a little farming village on the edge of one of these uh, floating islands and uh ari he always wants to be a Marine to join the Navy and fight for his people and protect them. And so when, uh, when the day comes that a cyclone attacks his community, at the, he's 10, and uh, he's, uh, he's uh, excited about it. He wants to watch. While everyone else is running for cover, uh, including Shailene, who is our, our female lead, uh, he is like, no, I'm going to watch. I'm going to see all my heroes go out there and fight the storm. And... Uh, he watches it, and in the middle of it, he gets struck by lightning and gets touched by the, the storm goddess. And he has these crazy dreams, and he wakes up, and it's all over, and the ship that went out, all his heroes, they all died, but they saved his people, but they all died in the process. And it, um, He sees that, like, war isn't all this heroic stuff, like in the legends, because he comes across, like, their bodies, and, and so it changes him. He doesn't want to be a soldier any longer after that after he's seen what it is and he just wants to grow up be a farmer marry Shailene but of course you know that would be a boring story <laughs> and so uh every every year uh on this one who turns 17 which is the age of majority for their people they have to go through the draft you know see if you'll end up in the navy and uh he and Shailene end up in the navy and uh so they're uh at this time at 17, they're going to be like, they're basically about to get married. Mm -hmm. But so, you know, they decide to get married, you know, because uh, if they don't, like they can get split up by the military. 
Mm -hmm. right? Sent off different posts and stuff. So, uh, yeah, the story is the first book is about them going to training, dealing with the stresses that puts on their marriage. But remember, Ari got struck with that lightning back in the first book. He got touched by the storm goddess. And people who are touched by the storm goddess are feared. They're cursed. And so this is a secret he needs to hide. And someone has figured it out and there's an assassin after him that he doesn't even know that's like trying to kill him in secret. The dark goddess is coming to him in his dreams and saying all these crazy things like begging him to free her and, you know, doing things that probably aren't good. And uh, so that uh, sets Ari and Shailene on this journey where they kind of have to figure out his dreams. They have to keep his secret. There's, you know, they have to serve in their Navy and that brings out its whole host of dangers, you know, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's fighting another cyclone or dealing with like sky pirates, you know, and so that's kind of what the series is set about, like trying to unravel what the mystery of these dreams are. What does the dark goddess really want from him? Uh, surviving the assassins and, you know, and can their relationship handle all these stresses that are placed on them? It's very, they're both very young and, um, well, they're not exactly the most mature people because, you know, they're 17. Yeah. So they might not handle these stresses well. So there's uh, that, that aspect to it. And um, yeah, so it's, it's epic. Uh, it's got a, a magic system that uses sort of like weather-based powers that kind of want them to have weather-based powers. So everyone gets like a magical power in this world at 17. Um, it's kind of random, but like Ari has like the ability to discharge lightning with his touch and he uses uh, this weapon called a thunder vest that fires lightning at a distance. And uh, Shailene has like the manipulation of air pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, which she can control around herself and this allows her with uh, a, a magical device to like fly on a pegasus and use that as like a scout and to fire like pressurized air bullets so, like air compressed so hard it's as hard as a bullet you could you know rip through a person so yeah so it's it's uh i really i really like the series it's got a lot of great characters uh people really people who, who read it really seem to love it so okay so yeah. You uh, you created a box set out of this, so it's five books in that box set. Um, how many more books are going to be in the series? It's all out. So there's two box sets with books one through three, and then books four and five, which are I couldn't release them as one box set because they're just such long books. Yeah. Um, this is something from the business side. So like Kindle Unlimited has like a page cutoff, like a book if it's more than four thousand pages, you don't get paid after that. Yeah, it's just a business thing. Um, and the series is, I mean, that last book is, uh, it's 225,000 words. Wow. Um, and so that's, um, that's like a 900 page book. Yeah, just by itself. And the rest of the books are, are pretty long, too. So I just, uh, I put them in the two box sets just for, you know, for business, but uh, they're both really reasonably priced. And they're in Kindle Unlimited if you uh, are subscribed to that, so you can read it for free. Cool. I uh, I had to actually switch my uh, browser away from your uh, Amazon page because I was sitting there staring at your not at your covers. I love your covers. I really do. Oh, oh thanks. Yeah, I have a, a great team down in Australia called Screen Powered Studios that does the books. Uh, the short stories are just covers that kind of just ground off sites off the internet, you know, just yeah. like like the you know uh, pre made covers, but. All my novels have commission covers. Yeah, I uh, I've talked to a few authors that that uh, that actually they buy art for their you know commission artists to do their yeah their covers and you can really tell just because of the you know and I gotta stop looking at it I'm sorry <laughs> I'll st I won't be looking at <laughs> that you know um, <laughs> like I said they're they're fantastic I love them um, I'm actually. Uh, um a little jealous i'm like yeah i should start doing that kind of stuff but um you know whatever mine are pretty simple they're urban fantasy so it's just like you know guy gal something in the background yeah like, yeah yeah, yeah urban fantasy is a little easier to <clears throat> you can do some good photo movie, but yeah you don't you know epic fantasy and and uh yeah a couple you're not going to get a lizard man on a yeah no, you're not. It's it's a guy and a girl, and and they're fighting something. But yeah. uh, <laughs> no, I I love the epic fantasy type uh, covers just because they're so detailed and they just have so much like they're so artistic. Well, I should say the good ones are. Some of the ones are you know, 
there there are some out there that aren't uh, you know real great but you know you, you don't judge a book by its cover kind of except for except for people do so you want to have a, the best cover you can that, you that sells your book that tells you what what people you know yeah i think the only people that say you don't judge a book by the cover are authors who have bad covers like you, know? you don't want to judge a book by its cover but i mean that's how i i've bought so many books based off covers yeah like i'm like oh that cover it looks cool let's grab that and see what you're about oh <laughs> so. Uh, so what else is going on so you uh you seem to how many books do you have out in total um, I have 10 novels, and um, I'm going to be releasing eight more next year for sure. Okay. Um, I just signed uh, up with Fall Brandt uh, Publishing, and they're going to be re-releasing my uh, Secret of the Jewels series and uh, a companion series and a sequel series to both of those. They're all going to be released by them next year. Mm -hmm. So we're rebranding. So right now it's called Secret of the Jewels. Yeah. But we're rebranding it to Jewels of Illumination so that um, then the next series is called Mass of Illumination and then we have Assassin's of Illumination. So but just for uh, branding. So they all kind of, so people go like, oh, this isn't the same. Because they're not exactly like the same series, right? They're mm -hmm. like two of them are like Mass and Jewels take place at the same time in different locations, but with characters that are connected to each other. And yeah. there's some crossover in their plots, but they're, they're each written to be their own story. And uh, you know, with telling their own with their own characters and struggles, and they're written that you could read either or, and not have the other one really spoil it. You know, other than some, some minor stuff. But yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Fall Brandt does a does a pretty good job, from what I understand. And yeah, I, I can't yeah. imagine that they don't be in that. You know, Jeff Kohonik's in there. So yeah, I'm really really excited. Uh, we're launching in I think February. Yeah. That'll be cool. Yeah. That'll be cool. I, like I said, I can't imagine, uh, you know, the marketing and everything that they do is pretty damn, uh, uh, pretty cool. So I, that was, that was a really good choice. I think, um, you should be happy with it. The nice thing about doing something like that is that then you can just write. Yeah. I'm, a. have never been able to stop writing enough to really figure out the marketing. It's yeah. like, it's like, I know I should, but then. I don't want to. And I want to go <laughs> right. And I'm just like, why can't just people just buy my books without me having to to market them? It, wouldn't it be nice if it worked out that way? Yeah, it would be. Just put it up on Amazon and then they buy it and you know, all life is all good. Yeah. 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 No, it doesn't quite work that way. No, I think I'm a little too late to the when that worked. I, like by about a decade, I think. By about a decade. <laughs> No, it would have been cool to start off, um, you know, back in 2000, what was it, six or seven or whenever they started that up? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Yeah, you know, and actually be, you know, publish my first book on Amazon, Ooh, I'm an indie, you know. Yeah, but I mean, I didn't start taking writing seriously until 2013. And, uh, and I tried to do the trad publishing route for a few years. Yeah. How'd that work? Well, I'm an indie author, so that's how well it worked. <laughs> The uh, I, I was talking to a uh, another gentleman who um, he was talking about all the uh, um, rejection letters that he's gotten, you know, over the years, and he's he's written, he's been writing for sixty years basically, and uh, <clears throat> um, I just I I got about tw just about thirty of them, and I just said, I'm just going to do it myself. Screw this. Because it was, you know, some wouldn't even respond to you. Some would respond, yeah. you know, well, this doesn't really fit in here. Or we don't have any room in our schedule. Or it's just, yeah. like, I just kind of looked down like, really? Okay. Yeah. Right. I went through my list of, like, agents that would accept, you know, fantasy. Yeah. And, uh, well, I didn't get a response from any of them. So, on Above the Storm, I didn't ever try with my, my second series. But that first one, yeah, I tried. I went to, I, and I don't know, you know, it's probably I didn't have my proposal right or, you know, or there's something, I don't know. But uh, yeah, it didn't work out. 
The so. more the more authors that I talk to that I know are good writers, and I know they write just kick ass stories. You know, it, it, they're people I look up to, and you know, you listen to their stories of dealing with publishers, and it's like you, even you, couldn't get on a tread. A, a trad publisher wow you know it just it just blows my mind on how you know how they could possibly make those choices and yeah most of them are happy that they didn't or you know they start up their own publishing thing or they got with a friend or you know whatever um just because they make more money you know i mean they actually they feel they feel like they're a little more fulfilled in in what they're doing i guess i don't know yeah yeah plus uh you know, there might come some weird uh, editorial things that the publisher might make you change and stuff like that. Yeah. So. Yeah, we didn't, haven't even gotten into that. So I'm just kind of curious because, you know, we, uh, I'm asking for a friend, how the heck do you, you know, 90,000 words in 36 hours. That's a, that's a pretty good clip. It's just, is it just sitting down and being slow and steady with it? Do you, uh, do you fast. answer plotter, you know, that those kind of questions. Um, so I'm like a hybrid. So I do a really, uh, I do a rough outline for a book, um, yeah. which is about a, a page of just sort of like, here's all the major events that I think I want in this and just can give me a roadmap. And then I plot out about four or five chapters worth, like scene by scene. So I like which character POVs, you know, what um, sort of the emotional beats of the scene as sort of a very rough one. And, but so when I go to write it, I, I just have to sort of like follow my roadmap and let my my con my stream of conscience sort of like pour out onto the page yeah. and get about you know twenty seven thousand or twenty seven hundred to three thousand words an hour doing that. Wow! So that's all right. That's that's not bad. <laughs> uh, you know, <clears throat> like I said, it helps that type fast. It's my yeah. it's it it you know. My hundred words a day probably doesn't really compare to that, but you know, some other people might do, you know, upwards to two or three, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's just, <laughs> that's how, how it works. That's how I'm able to be so effective. It's just, uh, but um, I discover a lot actually in the writing. So like, it's very bare bones outlining and stuff. Yeah. And it's more like, I guess I just roll up and, I, and I'll, I'll, sometimes I'll forget to write parts, but, or I'll think of better things as I'm writing or, you know, or I'll figure out uh, things that make sense, or, or I'll make connections that I hadn't made yeah. uh, to past parts of the book, and I'll suddenly go like, "Oh, wait, this is like connected with that," and I can highlight that. I make had it the, seem like it's planned when it's not as planned as people might think. <laughs> I had the dumbest thing happen to me last night. Yeah, two thirty. I, I I don't know what I was dreaming, but I woke up and I had an idea. All right. Yep, jump up, jump on my computer. Six o'clock rolls around. Oh crap! Got to get the kids up. Got to do this. Got to do that. You know. Oh <clears throat> uh, yeah. It was yeah. something I've been working on. And I was stuck, and it's just like, okay, got it fixed. Nice. You know, yeah. Of course, that makes for a great day going forward. Lots of Red Bull and everything else going on over here. Maybe even a beer or two. Who knows? But um, <laughs> I got to counteract things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's three it reps, one beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, sounds like a good ratio. Yeah, you look like a whiskey man to me. Is that you know, you beer whiskey? I actually don't drink much at all. Really, I'm like a social drinker where I'll have a beer if I'm okay. out with people. That's about it. I'm not wow. Yeah, I can't, I kind of do the Heming Hemingway thing. Oh, yeah, no, my vice is food so. I just, um, you'll let me, I'll just eat too much and become even fatter than I already am. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, no. I don't know. My parents didn't drink, so there was never like alcohol in my house when I was a kid. So. Oh, yeah. My my parents didn't really drink either. I just, I, I took enough for both of them. <laughs> yeah. no, I don't, never actually got one. My dad didn't drink. He wasn't like religious or anything. Yeah, I mean, he smoked a lot of pot, so maybe that was it. <laughs> well, I didn't know. know that. I didn't know that growing up. I learned that actually when I was like a teenager. But really, yeah. Well, he he kind of had to come clean when he, he was in the air force and he got pissed hot, and at seventeen years in the air force, yeah. so 
as a, um, he was like an E5. So that's, you don't get away with that. Uh, not in the, not in the nineties when they were like downgrading the military under Clinton. Right. So he kind of had to like, yeah, no, because he spent a month in like the, the jail. And so <laughs> it's, yeah. It, you didn't know any of that? I didn't know until then. Then I kind of had to know. Like, oh, you know, yeah. Like, I don't know. He, he was always on his garage, like, working on cars, I guess. Like, what he's... Uh, I mean, I guess he wouldn't smoke a lot of pot, but he was smoking enough that, you know, he got in trouble. <laughs> mm-hmm. <clears throat> I think it's kind of funny, uh, you know, the way they're legalizing it state by state, basically, now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm in Washington, so they did that. Like, everyone goes, like, Colorado did it first. I'm like, yeah, but we actually did it the same year as Colorado, but... <laughs> We're Washington, and no one ever gives a shit about our state. <laughs> What's it like in Washington? What do you? I mean, you know. Uh, well, it depends what part you're in. So I'm on the I'm on the west coast. I'm on the west side of the Cascade Mountains, where it's all rainy. Yeah. Uh, the east side's a desert. Like so, like everyone thinks Washington is rainy, but three quarters of our state is a desert. <laughs> and then the other the other quarter, it gets a lot of rain, and uh, has a rainforest. The only like temperate rainforest in the world. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's uh on the Olympic Peninsula. It's uh it gets and it goes up into uh the uh British Columbia. But, uh, that gets a lot of rain. Then where I'm at kind of gets a moderate amount of rain and then no rain goes over to eastern Washington. Huh. So is it uh I assume that you have lots of trees and and Yeah, yeah. we well we have we're called the Evergreen State, so there's always like giant pine trees everywhere. Yeah rather green and it's moderate so like uh i mean it's like 50 today and uh that's kind of average for winter here really uh yeah well because we get we get there's a warm current that comes up from hawaii yeah. and so it keeps it up unless it's a, a la nina i believe it is and that's where the currents reverse and then we'll have a, a rather cold winter yeah. and we'll get lots of snow and it'll be like in the 30s all the time yeah. That's like every four years. But other than that, it's rather mild winters with maybe a snowfall or two hmm. that lasts like a day. One of the things I learned in doing this podcast and talking to other people is that I, I live in one of the crappiest states. Oh, I live in Wisconsin. <clears throat> I live in Wisconsin. Hmm. Yeah. So we have it nice up until Christmas and then January and February just suck. Yeah, yeah you get that that snow. My well, my brother's in Nebraska, so yeah, same thing. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Flip me phone over. Um, so other than that, um, what what do you have, what do you do for hobbies? Well, when you work 16 hours a day, um, writing, there's not a lot of hobbies, but I read. That's mainly it. I read. Yeah. And, um, uh, I play D and D once a month. D and D once a month. Yeah. Over sort of like zoom. Okay. Uh, with some of my friends, yeah. So we, we do that era one Saturday a month. Huh. Yeah. So do you work five days a week or seven? Seven. Wow. Well, if I didn't, I would just sit around my house bored and then I would just start writing anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like why I might as well. It's not like a it's not like it's it's work, but it's it's not work work. It's right. uh, it's enjoyable work. So <clears> I I like doing it. So. I see you have a Little Mermaid in the background. Little Mermaid, do I? I don't know. Uh, is that, is that uh, that's a, oh, that's no, Oscar. that's not a Little Mermaid. Never mind. Uh, that's Oscar from Evangelion. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. I do actually. She is actually on my desk. Oh, she is? Ariel. Okay. Yeah, Ariel from The Little Mermaid, yes. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no. I like Ariel. I don't know. When I was a kid, I really liked the Wilmer, right? like when I was like 10 or whatever. Yeah. So my, uh, cause yeah, she came out in what, like 89. So that's, I was like eight or so when the Wilmer made came out. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah my uh, oldest daughter, um, when that came out was, uh, well, actually, no, I'm sorry. Came out in 89. She was, uh, born in 90. Okay. So, and then my youngest daughter was born April 3rd this year. So that's what kind wow. of span I have in my family. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> but, uh, the, uh, 
and no, we're not, uh, we're not Mormons or Catholics, but, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Probably well, the earth. We only have four kids, but like do one every, every decade. Listen, my, uh, my friend, he is the oldest of 16. So yeah. they're not Mormon or Catholic. They're, uh, they're just born again Christian. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, they, uh, his parents took that be fruitful and multiply thing really literally. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> like that's it. They were like, yeah, no, God's good to have kids. So we just, you know, just have yeah. kids. It's kind of like that stupid joke that grows around Facebook. Mom and dad, I don't know what they did to keep themselves busy in winters and no TV, no, no real anything. And I've asked all 16 of my brothers and sisters and they have no idea either. <laughs> yeah. No idea what they did. No, no idea. No idea. Don't want pictures either. Anyway. No, definitely not. So, you know, you write 16 hours a day and... No, write, edit, do social media, you know. Yeah, the whole author thing, like yeah. All that author stuff, all the author life. So, I mean, you, you take time to read, right? I take an hour break uh, to actually read just in the middle of the day or so. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I spend an hour reading. What do you read? So, like, it's you know whatever is there to like whatever is on my kindle like um and right now i'm reading a bunch of manga and japanese light novels but one day i'll get through them all and read others <laughs> how big they're, is uh well go, go ahead kindles well light novels are really short they're like an hour and a half to read one yeah and then but they, they're these long series so like you think like oh it's only an hour and a half i can get to this really fast but there's like 20 of them and then yeah. And then there's another one. And you're like, oh, okay. And like, they just keep coming because you pre-order them on Amazon. <laughs> and, like, oh. and, they, and then Aberta Amazon advertises you more of them. And you're like, oh, yeah, no, okay. There's, there's this one. This looks interesting. And then, um, or, I, you know, I'll read other books too. Like, you know, my friend Sanderson's new book came out last month. And... Yeah, that's going to take you more than a couple hours. Yeah. Yeah. No, I took actually three days off to read that. <laughs> yeah um i don't know uh, did uh you see that uh short story um uh anthology that's out in uh ifa you're part of yeah. indie fantasy addicts aren't you i am but i i'm so bad at keeping up i'm in so many groups that i don't so yeah a bunch of their a bunch of their authors put together a uh anthology and so no, nice. 22 authors gave away to the or the given away for free on, on Amazon and it's a, a nice little short uh, book of about uh, 714 pages if you buy the pap, uh, paperback yeah yeah that's uh you know 22 short stories adds up yeah it does yeah, yeah. it was uh, funny during the creation of it because they were uh, you know there's some epic fantasy folks in there and only 10,000 words how am I supposed to do that they did a very nice job, but it was, you know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how flash fiction authors do it. Like, write a story with 1,500 words. I'm like, are you kidding? I'm just, like, setting up, like, the, the, the premise with 1,500 words. I, that's one that kind of gets me a little bit, too. I don't, I don't you know, it's got to be such a concise uh, type of writing that I'm not even sure I could do it. Yeah, it like, you, how much world building, like, you can't, I can't, it's so hard to do like fantasy. You got to do so much world building because um, you're, you can't rely on people just knowing what you're talking about. No. You know, I, that one does, you know, and the authors that do it do a good job. I mean, yeah. I mean they, they do. I mean, it sells. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, people read it, I guess. Um, but uh, I, I look at it and I'm like, uh, okay, no, that's not. That's I can do a, I could do a fancy story with like 7,000 words. Yeah. Like, you know, and uh, do my world building, introduce my characters and, you know, have a, you know, your, all your parts, your beginning, you know, your rising action, your development, you know, 7,000 words. I can do that. But 1,500, oof. Well, you know, you could do the world building and then you have to be really light on the magic system. And, you know, I mean, there, there's, there's not a lot of, you know, you have to be very, very descriptive very, very quickly to get yeah. to the story you know and i it just i don't know i i suppose after practice it'd be okay but yeah yeah 
I, th I think it really depends on where your heart is. And if it's really something you want to do, then do it. But if not, then like, yeah, I'll skip it. I pulled it off once. And I think anyways, I'm, I wrote one anyways. Yeah. Was, <laughs> pulled uh, it off, you think. Okay. Well, I don't know how much, like, because it was in the, it's in my uh, Storm Below series. It's, it's sort of a, uh, there was like this historical event that like one of my characters talks about. And I just, I wrote it. Um, and it's very like fast paced, like, thing or it's not really like a the problem is is like there's no like character growth in it yeah there's no arc for the characters because there was no time to write an arc for the characters it was all just like describing what happened and and getting through it and then you know and doing the world building and so it's like like i could have made it a lot better if i had more words you, you like, kind of uh, it's kind of the end of the book or the end of, i mean it's the end of the story i mean i i don't know I, I, I try and write uh, shorts every now, you know, two or three times a year. And then, uh, you know, just, I, I try and do stories that build into my series, you know, like. Yeah, like, I use short stories. stories. Uh, most of the time my short stories are, are like doing world building or, yeah. or setting up something that I want to write. And this is sort of like a taste for something I want to write down the road. And yeah. it's like wetting my appetite with like the setting and premise mm -hmm. and um yeah hopefully I'll, I'll get to make them into a novel one day but. i'll write uh uh stories about the villains just so i understand where they're coming from oh, kind of nice. kind of opposite so that you know there's this guy out there that's just you know screwing up all of his plans and he'd be like you know sitting at the table going damn it why did he how did he figure that out you know and on the other side, in the actual book, the guy's going, what the hell is he going to do next? He's killing me. You know, I just, I think that's kind of fun. I never, I never release them because it's, you know, just my notes, but I, I, I try and see everything from, you know, other perspectives to see, okay, what, you know, whether it works or not, God knows. I don't know. I, I, I did that. Like, um, so I, I mentioned, so Secret of the, or Tools of Illumination and Master of Illumination, they take place at the same time. But yeah. in book three, the main characters of both meet up and they're they're ex-lovers and they have a lot of unresolved uh stuff with their relationship <laughs> oh fun. and so and so this scene for both characters is to resolve their relationship mm -hmm. and so you read it from like you read it from one character's you know perspective and like like the male character like the female character comes off as like a bitch and then you read it from her perspective and then my editor is like man i really hate like Ovid after yeah. reading that and i'm like yeah, but that's you had the opposite reaction when you read it from her his perspective <laughs> like a year ago. <laughs> and she's like, oh yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that's because uh you're you're seeing it from like their like POV and like why they're saying the stuff they're saying. And you don't have like why the other person is saying it. So. That's that's fun. That I mean that sounds really cool. Yeah. Well that, that was kind of the point. Like uh, everyone I tell it was like everyone who's read like Jules of Illumination, I'm like, okay. Now they're, I'm going to write a series about uh, Funari, and they're like, "Wait, that that bitch that broke Ogren's heart." I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> I like I hate her." I'm like, "I know, but you're going to love her after reading yeah, her story because this is this is this is her redemption because it's like her like you get to see like because she because she really was like the bad guy in why their relationship fell apart. Okay, and so you have every right to like not Ogren has every right not to like her, and you as the reader sympathizing with Ogren have every right not to like her okay and she doesn't really like herself for how she handled it so i think that's why her story would work because it's her kind of like wanting to be better than that old person she was that uh she cheated on it and that was the whole thing and uh, yeah. that led to a duel and that duel led to someone being dead and so yeah don't give it away well it's a short story uh i actually it's called duel and uh it's not giving away because like you you learn this and like they're both characters like opening chapters okay that. so this is no spoiler and like i said duel was written first and it's actually after writing duel because duel is written from the perspective of the guy that died so that's a but um i, I always want to write what happened to these two characters after i wrote this short story yeah and so uh, now there's two five book fantasy stories because i wrote a short story like four years ago and i just really wanted to know what happened to these two other characters after they walked off screen yeah yeah huh so yeah it's like I just had to because I had an idea for a short story and I just wanted to really write the short story. And after I wrote it, I was like, well, I want to see what happens to these characters after they did this. 
hmm. and what did I do to them? And right you now, and I had this idea in my head about what it would be, and, and it uh, spawned these two book series that I'm really, really happy with. I'm hmm. Really looking forward to people reading the, the second one. <clears throat> So um, you uh, you told me before we started recording that you just finished up a book. You're finishing up a book. Uh, I just finished. Oh, I just finished two books last month. I'm writing two different series at once because I'm just like a baller like that. So I finished like the second book of my Shadows of the Dragon, which is an epic quest fantasy series. You know, okay. and it's a bit. Um, it's not quite as I think as dark themes so that kind of get into it with my other ones. And then I finished uh, the first book of Assassins of Illumination, which is a sequel to Jewels of Illumination, but it follows, it doesn't follow, it follows different characters. So that's why it's not like a continuation of it, but it takes place in the aftermath of those books following one of the sort of villain characters. And then it has a character from a Finari story that comes and like joins this story. So it's kind of like a sequel to both of their stories. And it, it and it, cause I have like a grand plan for, like, I'm not done with the characters and there's like a great so there's like they solved the problem that their series was about that's like there's like a greater meta problem out there in the world that sort of I'm going to be building up to over the course of several different book series and characters and that's the plan you know, to see if I pull it off but um so and Assassin's of Illumination is about uh it's about a shape changer named no one and uh he was like uh he was used by the villains, but they're all dead, so he's kind of like free now. Yeah. And so, like, what does he do with his life? And he takes people's identities when he kills them. So he has like about sixteen people's lives in him, and they're all like, he can when he becomes them, he is them, right? Like, it's not like he just pretends. He really like just becomes them. Okay. He has like the overriding purpose that's given to him by like his uh, handler. And so that keeps him on his mission, even if like that goes against what he wants to do. And, and so now that he's free, he wants to be the person he used to be before he got changed into this. But he has all these identities and they want their lives back. You know, they want to, they want to like apologize to loved ones that sure. were hurt while he was masquerading as them. They, uh, so he's being like torn apart, like by this and trying to, you know, keep from, you know, keep himself in whole and and uh there's another assassin trying to kill him to get back at him for one of the people he killed and then there's a whole crime syndicate that's wanting to use him for their own purposes of course and so it's a, it's a it's a mess of the story and that's where it's kind of it's where he finds himself in so it's kind of uh yeah it's him just trying to struggle with his identities and you know figure out who he is and is he even this person he thinks he is like is the original person really the original person you know is he you know so he has oh, like so he, he can't tell no because he spent uh <clears throat> he doesn't know he doesn't know yeah like for sure right you know he thinks but is he you know there's a uh, so yeah so he's got a lot of issues huh he has to work out does he work him out not a book one. <laughs> it's a trilogy. I can't have him figure out his problems in a trilogy. So. Okay, it's a trilogy. And then I just started. I just started his second book today. I got the first chapter written and then the chapter two. Yeah. So that's good. That's always great to get a book written or start a book. Yeah. So your outline. You said you first four, five, six chapters, and then and then you just kind of let her flow after. That. No, then I sit back and I think about what will they do next. Okay. So usually, so I plot to like the kind of first major story point. So like it's where something happens in the story that changes things. Okay. So, so after this point in the story, there's been a, a shifting in the status quo and how do our characters react to that? And then, so then I plot out like what they do next and how that builds up to the next sort of, you know, decision point where, you know, consequential actions happen that have an impact on characters' lives and stuff. Sure. And then I just rinse and repeat until I get to the ending. <laughs> rinse and repeat, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but this way, it lets me, uh, it lets me like pants the character arcs and character growth and character emotions. I really have, I can't outline that as well. Like, yeah. I don't see that well. I have to really write the characters to see how they respond to things. And they might respond to things differently than I think on this sort of sterile outline where I'm just kind of thinking of, plot and i'm not necessarily thinking of characters where i'm kind of hoping 
I'm make I'm having the characters will or I'll be able to figure out why the characters will be doing the things that are in my outline. Yeah. Sometimes that doesn't work. Um, like jewels or massive illumination four. Like I I discarded like three or four endings, so I couldn't make any of them work. <laughs> and and then another ending came out of like left field in the middle of writing a scene. And yeah. Yeah, and it really changed like the tone of book five because it had major impacts on my main character. Uh, and so it and it wasn't planned. It came to me in the middle of writing a scene. I was like, I figured out a character. Like I like I'm writing the character and I'm I'm you know, I'm thinking about how he's gonna be responding to these things, and things started clicking into my place. You know, this is like four books worth of character development on him, and then it all kind of like he crystallized in my mind exactly what sort of person would be doing all this and how that person would actually react in this situation. And yeah. it's just like, well, right then, that's what he would be doing. And this is going to a really dark place now. And uh, all right, let's let's uh, let's write it. So how many times do you hold your hand or your head in your hands after you get done with the writing session going, why the hell did you just do that? You ruined everything. Oh, I uh, this out. Um, <laughs> I know, I don't ever see it as ruining. I see it as improving. This, like I see it as this is my subconscious doing its job. Oh, yeah. it's, it's filtering through all my ideas and it's making all my connections that my conscious mind is not. And as I'm writing it, my subconscious is like feeding me stuff and it fed me stuff I had and my conscious mind hadn't made the connections on, on who this exactly this character was and how he would react. And so that's, okay. that's my opinion of what people say when they said that character did something I didn't expect. Yeah. And really, to me, it's my subconscious just said stepped in and said like hey dummy you've missed something really big here it is and uh and generally my subconscious is right and i listen to my subconscious that's a very balanced way of looking at it i just i get frustrated and then okay and then think about it the problem i have is that you know what i write is better than what i thought it, you know as far as and then all of a sudden you're pigeonholed and you got to figure out how to get you know your character out of this so you don't i will it. say well i in this case i didn't mind the character change because i was floundering for an ending now because i couldn't i wanted to have a villain that was like they had gotten away from the villain right this yeah. character and i wanted him to show up in the finale and attack them i just couldn't figure out how he would find them because mm -hmm. uh, he didn't he's not that He's like a Terminator, but without like a phone book that can tell you where someone died. Or, you know, he's like that, but a Terminator in like, Vict you know, in like Victorian times when you don't have like even the rudimentary like information database that like you had in the 80s of like phone books and right. news reports and stuff to like track down someone. So like once they, the guy loses them, he's not going to be able to find them. They're like thieves. They're like really good at like not being detected. Okay. And so it's like, and I just, I couldn't like, uh, and he's also, so I thought like, well, what if you just saw them coming out of the lair? Like it's possible he would know where that was. And like, no, he's also that sort of guy that would just attack them immediately. And so it was just like, it didn't work. Basically I wanted to have this whole climax happen in this dungeon area with him in this big fight. And I just like, it, it just didn't work. And so <laughs> I, I had to scrap that. And so I don't know what my ending is going to be. And I need a, um, I, had, I need to have this, these two characters have a conversation to sort of end, um, to sort of resolve some of their relationship stuff. And um, it, went, it went dark and south and sideways and <laughs> provided me my ending, weirdly. And uh, yeah, so yeah, that was, uh, was definitely an interesting moment to, uh, mm -hmm. uh, where like that book just like, like I had something had gone really wrong on writing that book and uh weirdly that fixed it huh yeah i i love stories like that from my own personal sp perspective because it you know puts people like you uh you're human james james reed you're actually a human yeah i get it yeah believe it or not i i have to like i've had to gut books and stitch them back together again because it's holy it cow <laughs> all my earlier stuff i'm a lot better now where like i kind of understand you know, I I understand I need to make my main character like not passive. I had a passive main character in the yeah. in the third book of the Storm Below where Shailene, she just uh she wasn't she wasn't being active in her story. She was just letting the story drag her along. 
mm -hmm. for a good chunk of the middle. And um, and I didn't need her to be. She could have been active. And so I just, and so making her active made the story better. And it accomplished all the same things that I wanted. But I just had to like rip out parts of the book and replace it with new material. And, yeah. And then stitch it back together. You know, I, I'm getting the feeling you're kind of philosophical about all this stuff, or you're kind of, you know, you kind of, <clears throat> you almost, uh, I'm getting the feeling you're very zen with your writing self. Maybe, I don't know. It just, uh, as you're maybe. kind of talking about it, it's kind of like, oh, so he, he, I mean, he, it feels like you're way more balanced than I am. It always, it's always so, you know, so much turmoil when I try and write and uh, no i'm very i get very focused and just yeah. sort of like like let the world fall away and just like write yeah and let and like i said my writing is kind of more stream of conscious that's probably also why i type so fast because i'm 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 kind of just like my mind is just spitting out the ideas and my fingers are trying to keep up sometimes yeah and it's very rare that i'm i'm having trouble putting words out and a lot of that is because i do have sort of that kind of roadmap so that keeps me from having to sit there and think, okay, what do they do next? Like, especially with like dumb stuff, with like the, um, like the 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 filler pieces that kind of get a character from place to place that you kind of just need to have. Yeah. You know, um, whereas like I can like if it's the emotional stuff, the important stuff, that stuff, well, I can, you know, that stuff just might come off the cuff, you know, if I need it to. Yeah. Although I would prefer to have it thought out and kind of outlined and have that roadmap, anyways, just so I can. You know, maybe make sure I have like the right thing set, and, you know, just for plot mm -hmm. reasons and stuff. But I think that's actually really just a big help that I just have this uh, this sort of guide, and it just helps me just then concentrate on like getting the ideas out of my head and put yeah. on the page and um, exploring the philosophies. Yeah, so there, I definitely say there's a lot of sort of not necessarily like like intellectually philosophizing, but like you know, characters, you know, thinking about their situation and why they do the things they do and why other people do the things they do and sort of contrasting like, you know, ideologies. I do do that quite a lot. I like, I like having characters have their ideology and believe it and representing the best I can, even if it's uh, not like an ideology I would agree with, but that's what the character believes. And then have them like argue with another character about their ideology. Sure. So I guess there's kind of like, I like that stuff. Bring a little tension into the story. I try. I sometimes think my, my characters get along too well sometimes. Uh, but I don't know, maybe that works. Like, like uh, my romantic characters tend not to argue too much. But when they do argue, it's usually really big stuff, kind of important stuff. But they tend to, I like to, tend, I tend to write like very uh, sort of like friends who are lovers type relationships. Okay. And that. I, I don't really like the uh, uh, the sort of like mad lust stuff, you know. Yeah. I like more. I'm I'm really just it's, it's really it's really fantasy if if it's two lovers that don't argue. <clears throat> they are. I would say they don't argue. I just they don't argue over everything. God, you know. Damn it! Why didn't why did you leave the milk out again? you know not stuff like that it's it's more... i've had arguments like that yes okay like little stuff maybe not arguments but like that sort of annoying like you know things it's just like you're kind of like annoyed yeah. you know, maybe you were maybe it might you know maybe you're in a bad mood it might blow up right into an argument yeah but when it comes to like more you know and sometimes like i said like so it's not to say that they don't argue it's like i just i feel like they don't argue over really stupid reasons like i don't artificial arguments is kind of maybe what i'm saying yeah or like my arguments are kind of rooted in sort of emotional you know perspectives that okay. the characters need to work out you know yeah and stuff like that or okay i i uh <clears throat> i can't relate to that i really okay. can't <laughs> <laughs> Every relationship I've been in, it's always, you know, <clears throat> who left the milk out? Who did this? What the hell are these dishes doing here? Just kidding. I'm being right. facetious. Right. I mean, I mean, you know, that's the stuff you don't need to have in a book because that's the boring stuff. True. That's like the everyday stuff. Yeah. And who wants to read about everyday stuff? Except, unless you're doing, you know. There are people that 
there is that there are people that write that it's just certain romance novels i've i've noticed you know if you if you kind of read them it's like oh jesus you know yeah i think it's kind of like that more over the top sort of like romance i guess i don't know i i don't know i i it's I like try, i try and read some of that just stuff just to be able to put a little bit of it into a book but it's really hard yeah i don't know maybe my characters are just like i said i mean i had like in this and above the storm, I had like my characters, like the husband wife kid into like, it's like one of those times when you're the guy and you just said the wrong thing and suddenly she's mad at you and you're like, what the fuck is going on? What, what just happened here? You know, because she's mad about something else, but this is just what she's lashing out at you about. And you're completely yeah. like, yeah, so like I do have that sort of stuff. I, I wonder as guys how well we do. I mean, how many women read that and go, oh, I know where this is. She's mad dude, she's mad because of this, you know, or whatever. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I've had some female readers are praiseworthy of it. I don't know. They're like, yeah, no, I like, I know, like I had like friends that would like that or, yeah, you know, I, I get why she's mad here or whatever. I don't know. I, I always kind of wonder um, the relationship stuff I try and stay away from just because it's, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, you know, it, I try to stay away cool. from. I try to stay away from like the the terrible love triangles. Right? Oh, like, yeah. We're like she's like she's like flirting with them both, and they're like you know you're like which one should I choose? I'm like, oh, God. God, shoot me, yeah. It's like it's like one of you guys in this relationship get some self respect and just be like, no, I'm not. You you can't flirt with us both. That's no, I'm done. I'm out. Yeah. I had a weird little triangle where one died and, and a witch took her place. And then uh, <laughs> she came back and she uh, kind of, you know, went through a ceremony that, that another witch did to this other person. And she kind of came back with some powers. And when they met up, it wasn't real pretty. <clears throat> it's I like, like it. yeah, that's a, yeah. And she's like, Oh, who's a slut? I see you replaced me fairly quickly. Didn't you Jacob? And just kind of goes, bad it's like it's how i imagine that would go <laughs> i can see that yeah i thought you were um, dead you know well i'm not bitch you know i, I don't know it was not I, uh, I do a lot of cursing in my book so it's you know yeah like i said i mean like i said i just did a book with a author with a female protagonist for the entire like story which was new for me yeah. And have like a male protagonist to kind of fall back on. It's like that's the one thing. Like all my my female readers, like oh yeah, we always love your guys. Like so I'm writing them right, <laughs> but like that's easy. They're like I have one like friend and she's always like wanting me to tweak like my female characters a bit. Um, and so I I was a little worried, but like this one like she had like guys that she would like attraction to, but they weren't like in a relationship. And there's like maybe some tension there. Yeah, and, and so. But then she got into a relationship with one of them and she realized like the other one needed to like, hey, you need to, you need to like moderate, you need to like change your perspective because it's not happening, right? <laughs> I'm like with, I, I went with, I'm with this other guy, you know, you're the, just like, you know, find, move on. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of like the love triangle. It's like, like in the beginning, like, yeah, she might be, she could have went, she could have ended up with either one of them, but she ended up with one of them and it wasn't a lot of, like sneaking off to have kids is more like just you know attraction you know and she's like dealing with her stuff because hmm. I, I wrote the series it was interesting because i wrote the series where she could have ended up with kind of three different people maybe when i first conceived it yeah i wasn't really sure where i wanted to go i wanted to write the story and just kind of see how it developed and see where like it kind of felt right to have her like to have the relationship progress and mm -hmm. um and it, she did end up with the one I kind of was wanting it to be, but like I, I was, I was ready for it to not go that way. And I just kind of see how it went, and because I also didn't know who was going to be the ultimate villain. It could have also been one of her love interests. Could have also like turned out to be the villain. Like that could have been the twist. Like, oh yeah, I love you. It's like cool. Also, I'm secretly Hitler. Are you down with that? <laughs> what? No. Oh, excuse me. I'm like, oh well, I guess we got a problem now, and now we're gonna have a a messy breakup that involves us trying to murder each other. Yeah, <laughs> that didn't happen. That didn't yeah, happen. that's kind of funny. So, 
Yeah. That's kind of funny. Um, kind of get or hitting up on the uh, on the hour mark here. Um, sure. So, do you have anything you want to tell your readers about what's coming out next year? So, like I said, we got uh, starting in February. We got the relaunch of Secret of the Jewels as Jewels of Illumination, and with that's going to be coming Master of Illumination, which is not a sequel, but like a companion series that takes place with uh, you know related characters. You know, uh -huh. Funari, and what she's doing. It's in different cities. And it has its own plot, but they kind of, uh, they build on each other. Like you might kind of get like more information about certain mysteries in one series that kind of will make things make a little bit more sense in the other series. Okay. Uh, cause they do are related and they are kind of dealing with some of the same stuff ultimately, but they have different, you know, antagonists, different conclusions. They have their own stakes. They're unrelated to each other. Right. And, uh, they, actually concluded about the same point in the story, just how it worked out, I think within like a week of each other on my timeline. And uh, after that, we'll be coming Assassin's of Illumination sometime later next year. Okay. I'm still running it, so it's a little, can't get the release date, but like I said, I'm hoping to have book two done by not long after New Year's, if not before, but probably it'll be a couple days after New Year's. And that's gonna be a trilogy, and that's, like I said, gonna be following no one, uh, the Assassin um, and, this character called Garnet, who is one of the characters, one of the thieves from uh, Mass of Elimination, the other series. So okay. she comes to like Cash to look at her own issues that she has. And she kind of just, you know, ends up in the story too. And through, uh, I, th I figured out a really good way to get like these two characters just to, to sort of collide together and make, I think, a really interesting story. Cool. Because um, they are not going to be on the same side. They're oh. going to be opposing each other. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they're going to be, uh, they're going to be each other's. End. So yeah, they're just, uh, they're per they both have purposes. They're both trying to accomplish things. Those things are going to be in conflict. Huh. And uh, yeah. So, so we'll see how that goes. And then you have all the little stories where you can build up. That, that is cool. That's, yeah. That's really yeah. Cool. And uh, my plan is to continue with, Oban and Avina, they're the main characters of Jewels of Elimination. I have ideas for two more series for them mm -hmm. that will, and one of them will kind of be the series that sort of wraps everything up and kind of solves some sort of greater problem that gets hinted to in the books and is behind a lot of the motivations of some of the more uh, esoteric characters like the White Lady and, uh, you know, her motivations and what her group is up to are kind of sure. really deeply tied into sort of the very foundational problems that exist in this world versus like the crime syndicates and the politics and stuff like that okay. that kind of is on the surface level huh very interesting sir you are very dynamic in what you're writing i i i find myself very intrigued with what you're what you're doing here i'm gonna have to pick up uh i haven't read your i haven't read your books i've got to be honest but uh i'm going to well, I hope you enjoy them. I will. I can't imagine I won't. To be honest with you, um, there is there is nothing there that uh, doesn't intrigue me. I guess would be uh, first of all what I'd say. Um, secondly, um, I want to thank you very much for all your time today. I know you're a busy guy. Sixteen hours of writing a day is tough. Um, yes. Yes. Whatever. But I do appreciate you taking out your or taking time out of your day to talk to me. I really do. Yeah. It was great. I had fun. Yeah, that's cool. Um, with that, I'm going to call this a close and say thank you for listening to the DIY Writer Podcast. Please subscribe on any app that you happen to be listening to this on for the podcast and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, with that, thanks again, James Reed. I appreciate it very much. And I want you all to have a great day and keep your chin up. Yeah. Have a good one, everyone. Please hit the subscribe button. I get a bonus for every subscriber and I only need 1,506 more to become a full-time paid employee. Help me please.